Welcome to the Depth Dive. Today, we're uh, digging into managing and securing modern networks. Yeah, specifically looking at things through the lens of like the HPE6 A86 exam material. Exactly. We know you want to get up to speed quickly, so think of this as, well, a shortcut to understanding the really crucial stuff. We've gone through the exam info, practice questions, all that background material. Right. And our mission today is to pull out those key insights, you know, the aha moments about things like proactive management, getting switches set up, security, and um, centralized control. It's all about getting that solid understanding efficiently. We'll hit the core concepts and, maybe more importantly, why they actually matter day to day. Okay, let's jump in. First up, spotting network problems before they cause chaos. Proactive stuff. Our sources mention Aruba Central having a feature for this. Uh huh. Aruba Central uses AI, artificial intelligence. It provides these AI-powered insights and alerts. AI, okay. How does that work in practice? Well, it's basically watching the network all the time, analyzing behavior in real time. So it learns what's normal. Precisely. It builds a baseline. Then, if something weird happens, strange traffic, devices acting up, it flags it, sends an alert. Ah, so you find out before everyone starts calling the help desk. That's the goal. Fix it before users are impacted. Hmm. And, you know, you asked about how it works, these AI models, often machine learning, they establish that baseline, of course. Yeah. Well, they're only as good as the data they learn from, right? Sometimes you might get a false alarm or maybe miss something totally new. Generally, it's a huge help. Right, because network data can be just overwhelming otherwise. Mm. Does the AI help cut through the noise? Yeah, that's a massive benefit. It acts like a filter. Instead of seeing every tiny blip, you get alerts for things that actually look like a real potential problem. So you focus on what's critical. Exactly. It yeah. lets admins focus their energy, respond faster. It's really moving from you know just reacting when things break to actively stopping them from breaking in the first place. That makes a ton of sense. Okay, let's switch gears. Picture this. New Aruba switch, fresh out of the box. You need to get it talking on the network using the command line. Where do you start? Okay, so for that initial CLI setup, the command you're looking for is setup wizard. Setup wizard. Yeah. Okay. And the nice thing is it's interactive. Mm -hmm. It guides you step by step right there in the command line. An interactive wizard oh. in the CLI. That's uh, kind of neat. What sort of basic stuff does it walk you through? It covers the essentials you need just to get it online. Oh. Things like um, setting the switch name so you know which one it is. Right, identification. Configuring the management IP address so you right. can actually connect to it remotely. And setting up your first VLANs, virtual local area networks. VLANs, those are for separating traffic, right? Exactly. Like creating different logical networks on the same physical switch. The wizard just makes that initial setup much simpler and, frankly, less prone to typos or errors yeah. compared to doing it all manually line by line. I mean, maybe it's not as visually intuitive as a graphical interface for some people, but for a CLI environment, it's pretty structured. Definitely sounds like it smooths out that initial hurdle. Okay, so the switch is up. Now, security. Always critical. The deep dive mentions 802.1x on Aruba switches. What's the main idea there? Uh, 802.1x. Yeah, that's all about locking down the network ports themselves. Think of it like a bouncer for every connection point on your switch. A bouncer? I like that. So you can't just plug anything in. Nope. Before a device or even a user gets actual network access through that port, they have to prove who they are. Their identity needs to be verified. How does that verification actually happen? Is the switch doing it? Well, the switch acts as the middleman, the authenticator. Hmm. It holds traffic back until the device trying to connect that's the supplicant successfully authenticates. Authenticates with what? Usually with a central authentication server, most commonly a RADIUS server. RADIUS stands for Remote Authentication Dial-In User Service. So the RADIUS server checks the credentials username password, or maybe a certificate against its database. If it checks out, the server tells the switch, okay, let them in. So it stops unauthorized laptops or devices just getting onto the network. Exactly. It's a standard way to boost security. Now, implementing it, that can involve a bit of work, managing the radius server, setting up the clients, you know, it adds a layer of complexity. Sure, but a strong security layer. Okay, so people are authenticated. How do we manage where they can go on the network? Our sources talked about dynamic VLAN assignment with Aruba ClearPass. Right, ClearPass. This is pretty cool. It lets you automate how people or devices get put into different VLANs based on who they are or what they are. Automate VLAN, so you don't have to manually configure ports for specific departments or user types? Pretty much. Mm -hmm. ClearPass has this policy manager. You set up rules, 
And then when someone connects, ClearPass looks at, say, their user role from the directory or maybe what kind of device they're using. Like if it's a corporate laptop versus a personal phone. Exactly. Or maybe even the time of day. Based on those policies, ClearPass tells the switch, put this user in the engineering VLAN or put this one in the guest VLAN. Ah, okay. Can you give a quick example? Sure. Think about a university. A student connects in the library. ClearPass sees they're a student, puts them in the student VLAN with access to course materials and printers. Oh, okay. Then a professor connects in their office. ClearPass identifies them as faculty, puts them in the faculty VLAN with access to maybe grade systems or research databases. A visitor connects straight to the limited guest VLAN. I see the aha there. The network just adapts automatically. That's powerful for security and just keeping things organized. It really is. Though setting up those granular policies does take some planning, of course. Naturally. Okay, moving on to something that sounds basic, but I guess is vital, keeping time accurately across all devices. What do Aruba switches use for that? Yeah, you're right. It sounds simple, but it's crucial. They use NTP, the network time protocol. NTP, and its job is just keeping the clock synced. Essentially, yes. Mm -hmm. It synchronizes the switch's internal clock with external reliable time servers. These servers are often hierarchical, you know, stratum levels indicating accuracy. Why is that so important? A few seconds off here or there, does it really matter? Oh, it absolutely does. Think about logs. If you're trying to troubleshoot an issue or investigate a security incident. Ah, you need the timestamps to line up across different devices to see the sequence of events. Exactly. If the clocks are off, correlating logs becomes a nightmare, maybe impossible. Hmm. Also, many authentication protocols like Kerberos rely heavily on synchronized time to prevent certain kinds of attacks. Like replay attacks. Precisely. Even small time drifts can cause weird operational problems or make diagnostics really tough. So yeah, NTP might seem basic, but it's truly fundamental for network stability and security. Good point. Didn't quite think of it that way. Okay, last topic. Back to centralized management with Aruba Central. Specifically, how do you handle updates, like firmware, across potentially hundreds of switches? The key feature there is switch grouping. Within Aruba Central, you can organize your switches into logical groups. Based on what? Location? Type? Could be anything, really. Yeah. Location, like all switches on the third floor. Or function, like all access switches. Or maybe by model type. You define the groups that make sense for your network. Okay, so you group them, then what? Then you can push out firmware updates or configuration changes to an entire group at once. Ah, so instead of logging into each switch individually, which would take forever. Right. You manage them in bulk, apply the update to the third floor switches group, and central handles deploying it to all switches in that group. That sounds like a massive time saver. It is. Huge efficiency gain. And just as important, it ensures consistency. You know, all switches in that group are running the same firmware version, have the same baseline config settings. It reduces errors and makes the whole network easier to manage and maintain. Definitely highlights the power of centralized platforms. We're seeing more and more automation, more AI like we discussed, coming into network management. Definitely a trend. So thinking about the future, what skills do you think network pros will need most? As these smart platforms take over some tasks, where should people be focusing their learning to stay ahead and really leverage these tools effectively, especially with everything getting more connected? That's a great question to ponder. Something to think about. Thanks for tuning in to this deep dive.